Assalamu alaikum sir. I am Iftikhar Kain, Department of Communication Security, Cabinet Division. Sir, lot of misconception has been cleared by your uh, informative lecture. Uh, we have all utilized a lot of things. Sir, a lot of the my question has already been answered by Asad Zia's question, but uh, I will utilize your, this opportunity. Sir, purchasing of property particularly and other thing on installment basis and on net basis, there is a lot of difference between prices. On net basis, you have to pay less, but on installment basis, property, which is not possible for me or uh, average income person uh, on net cases, we already try to purchase on installment, but some ulama has their own viewpoint. Some are asking this is according to the Islamic principle. Some are saying this is not according to the principle of Islam. Sir, what are your views in this regard? Thank you, sir. If the Kharuddin Saab, thank you very much for your uh, question. I enjoyed the question and I hope that uh, you would enjoy the answer as well. Uh, whenever it comes to the financial matters, I must emphasize that we should seek advice from those scholars who specialize in what is known as fiqhul muamalat al maliyya the jurisprudence of is, uh, financial transactions. Not all ulama, uh, they have this expertise. Okay. So my answer would be based on the experts of Muamilat al-Maliyah, Fiqhul Muamilat al mali There is no uh, disagreement amongst scholars and jurists of any school of thought, whether this is Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, uh, Jafriya, Zaidiya, etc. That uh, credit sale, which, which you are mentioning installments, right there, can have a different price than the cash price. Normally, uh, a credit uh, price would be higher than the cash price anyway. And it makes sense. Okay. Uh, so uh, from Sharia viewpoint, there is no problem. Okay. Those scholars who say that there is a problem, I think okay, they are not uh, experts in Fikul Muhammad al -Mani. And I tell people, don't go to your Mukami Masjid for this one. Because the guy over there, he's a very good khatib. He's a very good imam. He would be able to guide you on matters related with wuzu, namaz, etc. But when it comes to the uh, financial matters, this may not be his area of expertise. And hence, okay, we should be very careful. I, I would be bold as to give an, uh, 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 an example. I have uh, respect for a lot of views uh, taken by uh, Ghamdi Saad. Okay. However, his understanding of financial matters is rather limited. I was watching one of his uh, programs. He's, he's a great scholar. I have no issues with that one. So I was watching one of his programs and someone asked him about interest. And he said, to my horror, I wasn't expecting this thing from uh, him. He said in Urdu, he said, Sood dena haram nahi hai, lena haram hai. Right? And I was, as I said, I was disappointed. Because his understanding of interest was shallow. I spoke to one of my uh, Sharia scholar friends, and he said, "I don't. We shouldn't blame him because he's not an expert in fiqhul muamalat al maliyya. He should have refrained from giving answer. If you ask me, uh, masaile wuzu or tayammum, I would say this is not my area of expertise." But if you ask me questions about fiqhul muamalat al maliyya I know. So I would give you answers. Okay. So in the circles of fuqaha specializing in fiqhul muamalat al maliyya there is no ambiguity at all that installment 
pricing in selling in installments is acceptable okay and the price could be higher why because islam has a value for time and I, this is something i would like to clarify because a lot of people they have confusion in islam there is no recognition of time value of money however islam values time and uh, uh, and because of this valuation of time it is acceptable to charge a higher price if the buyer is going to pay after some time however that price which the two parties have agreed it cannot be increased after you have signed this contract if you increase that price that would come under the rules of riba interest that will become interest so if you are buying a uh, say a plot of land in bahria town and these guys they tell you that you know this is a 3 years 5 years plan and this is the total price you are going to pay say this is 1 crore rupees okay and you pay in these installments this is acceptable from sharia view point now the question arises if you miss your installment and these guys they say oh because you have missed this installment you have to pay us more that is called riba that is called interest that is called sood this is something people should be avoiding because you have already because islam recognizes time you have already charged me more for this time and for some reasons uh, it was not under my control this was covid 19 for example and i have not been able to pay my installment okay. so you cannot charge me higher because of this default if they do this thing this is categorically prohibited in islam this was actually what what is known as riba al jahiliya riba al jahiliya there is no disagreement among scholars of any time and any generation the riba al jahiliya was unambiguously prohibited by islam so wherever there is a default penalty that brings the whole arrangement under the ambit of riba al jahiliya that becomes haram so if uh, bahria town asks you to pay more for missing an installment that is not acceptable that is riba however if the cash price is 85 lakh and they say you pay us in 5 uh, years this is 1 crore price if you accept it this is fine and this is what all the banks are doing anyway thank you sir thank you sir